Hello neighbor, I'm Robert Burns and it is such a delight to be back with you today and today we're going to be dealing with installment two with regard to the Kathy Durbin constructive discharge lawsuit that she has filed against the State Police Commission. Now we'll give you a link for installment one but since we have so many new viewers let me briefly say uh, that entailed uh, basically uh, Ronnie Jones, who is the, the chairman of Governor John Bell Edwards' Gaming Commission, uh, it's in paragraph 17 of the lawsuit, we'll give you a link for the lawsuit, uh, him having uh, allegedly said in a telephone conference call uh, with regard to Kathy Durbin uh, voicing her concerns that Governor Edwards was not filling the vacancies on the State Police Commission in conformity with the Louisiana State Constitution and we had provided you with videos showing where he was sworn in saying that he would uphold the Louisiana State Constitution uh, and she was making it known that in fact he was not doing so. He was directly making the appointments which was in defiance of of the Louisiana State Constitution wherein you're supposed to get letters from uh, various colleges, about six of them across, across Louisiana, uh, and he was just basically ignoring this. And Ronnie Jones, the chairman of his gaming commission, allegedly said that he had just visited with Governor Edwards' office and that they had told Kathy Durbin to, quote, shut the F up, okay? That's what, that's in a nutshell what segment one dealt with. We're going to be moving on to segment two, but before we transition to section two and the subject matter of it, uh, I just want to say one thing. I told you in the last, uh, in segment one, that we were going to discuss in more detail why this lawsuit that Ms. Durbin filed, and we gave it to you before. Like I said, for the first time in six or seven years, I went out and actually bought a newspaper and actually confirmed my conviction not to do so uh, going forward. This is the only one I've purchased in about six years. But you can see this, I mean one of the most bland headlines. First of all, it's buried in page 3A. You have no photographs. And just look at the title. Ex-State Police, Police Commission Head Files Suit. Boy, that's a real eye grabber there. I'll tell you, there were probably all of about 12 people probably wrote that, read that article. And I'm here to tell you that's by design, okay? And let me just say something. The whole reason Sound Off Louisiana was formed is there were a number of times that I was trying to get the attention of the news media. And here's, the, here's, here's what has to happen. First, you have to clear the individual journalist hurdle. Okay, does he have an interest in it, he or she? Uh, but even if you clear that, then they have to say, let me bounce it off of my editor. Okay, I'm going to tell you, that's a huge hurdle. Uh, and even if you clear that hurdle, then even the editor is subject to having the, the whole story quashed by the owner. And I will just tell you that the owner of the advocate, John Georges, um, you know, he has significant gaming interest. So if you think he's going to do something to embarrass the governor and alienate the chairman of, the, of his gaming commission, Ronnie Jones, remember it's Ronnie Jones who revealed this, that the governor's, somebody in the governor's office said, told Kathy Durbin to shut the F up. Okay, it ain't going to happen. All right? And that's why you're seeing the whole feature buried in page 3A without any kind of photo and the one of the worst headlines I've ever seen drafted. And like I said, I don't want to lay the blame for that at Jim Mustian's feet because I can assure you uh, he's better than that. Uh, but he was told to tone this thing down and keep it buried and don't draw much attention to it. Well, that's not consistent with what I do at Sound Off Louisiana. I don't answer to an editor. I don't answer to an owner. All right. So you're going to get some raw naked facts with me. Uh, and Governor Edwards or anyone else can just deal with it, okay? You know, this man told Kathy Durbin to shut the F up. It's a real problem, especially for a governor who touted this honor code and, you know, raised his right hand and swore, I think, on the Bible uh, that, that uh, he would uphold the Constitution of the state of Louisiana. I would submit to you that telling someone to shut the F up when they're telling you what the Constitution says and says this is what we need to do, uh, that's a real problem, especially for someone that wants to tout this West Point honor code. But at any rate, that was the contents of Section 1. Let's move into Section 2. Uh, in talking about uh, the second installment, we're going to focus in on page 4 of Kathy Durbin's lawsuit. It's right here, and we're going to blow it up, page 4. And we've highlighted several parts because the second major element of her lawsuit dealt with illegal political campaign contributions that was made by Governor Edwards' campaign. Uh, now, it wasn't 
into Governor Edwards' campaign. It wasn't just his. I want to emphasize that. There, there were numerous representative senators, even Bobby Jindal himself, uh, were on the receiving end of these illegal political campaign contributions by the Louisiana State Troopers Association. Well, Ms. Durbin received a complaint about this issue, and so she did what logically you would figure she needs to do, and she forwarded on the complaint. And we're going to, let's look at paragraph nine. It says, on the same date, March 14, 2016, defendant, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, on, in, on that same date, March 14, 2016, petitioner advised, petitioner will be Kathy Durbin, petitioner advised the governor and his counsel that she had already reported the improper political activities to the Louisiana State Board of Ethics, which she had done on March 7, 2016. On March 16th of 2016, petitioner met with the commissioner of administration and gave him a copy of her March 14th, 2016 document. Now, of course, the commissioner of administration would be Jay Darden. Uh, and from what I'm told, Jay Darden said, oh, absolutely, you've got to report this to the ethics uh, board. Now, by the way, the ethics board looked into this whole thing. They said there were very clear violations here. Uh, and they issued a $5,000 fine. For those of you who may not be familiar with what happened, the, the State Troopers Association uh, basically had its executive director, David Young, uh, write personal checks uh, to uh, these campaigns, and then they just reimbursed him for out of the State Troopers Association's checking account. They reimbursed him for it. They basically used him as a straw donor uh, to facilitate the, these campaign contributions that they wanted to make. Now. If you skip on down to page 11, uh, I'm sorry, paragraph 11, uh, <clears throat> first of all, she had put it on the agenda for April 14th of 2016 for the State Police Commission to deal with. And I want to tell you right now, Kathy Durbin stepped in. If you don't think she stepped into a minefield, you just look at what we're going to provide you on the rest of this page. She stepped into a minefield, and she was a gone pecan, pecan the minute she did this. All right, but let's look at paragraph 11. In the interim, petitioner met with the governor's council on March 28, 2016, who advised petitioner that the state police commission members and its chairman would be given the opportunity to resign. When petitioner contacted then chairman regarding the governor's council statement, he said he will not resign and that the governor will have to remove him. Also on March 28, 2016, upon information and belief, the president of the LSTA informed its membership that the FBI is involved and had issued formal process for documents and that the FBI had requested copies of the LSTA checks for the dates from October 2015 through January 26, 2016. That would be the prime period when all these illegal campaign contributions were made. Now, on the final paragraph, it 12, I'm going to just briefly hit it. It talks about all the resignations that transpired. Uh, and it, and you'll see over to the, to the far right I've got highlighted uh, about T. Taylor Townsend. You know, that, that's John Bell Edwards' is a super PAC head there. Uh, and we're going to deal with that quite a bit in segment three. Okay, I'm, I'm only just introducing him right now in that regard. Uh, we'll discuss him in more, more, more at length uh, in installment three of this feature. But I want to just at this point, we talked about the illegal campaign contributions and uh, I just want to say something. The State Police Commission meeting on February 8th 2018 was very, very, very personal for me, all right? Uh, and what I'm going to do right now, as many of you know, I was an auctioneer for about a decade, uh, and we, if, if you're not familiar with it, the official charity for all auctioneers across the entire nation who are members of the National Auctioneers Association, of which I was a proud member for a number of years, is the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. And I'm going to ask your indulgence, and I'm going to break away, and I'm going to let you see a brief video of me auctioning off a St. Jude's Research Children Hospital tie just prior to a real estate auction. Let's break away, and I want to see you. Hopefully you'll like my auction abilities. It's only about three minutes. But I want to break away and let you see me conducting that auction. We'll be right back. Since we do have a few newcomers, 
Uh, what we like to do is just kind of relax everybody a little bit and kind of break the ice and also raise some money for a good cause. If you'll notice, I am wearing a St. Jude's... Make sure I get it on. So here, I got the tangled in the microphone there. Uh, I am wearing a St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital tie. If some of you wondered when you walked in, good Lord, what is that? Uh, and Mr. Phillips, likewise, is wearing a St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital tie. And uh, I know I just gave you the latest edition of the NAA magazine, Freddie. And I, I don't hold it to this figure, but I believe it's approximately more than you may have even closer figure. Somewhere around 4.8 million, I believe, is collectively. The St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, I'm sure everybody's familiar with, is in Memphis, Tennessee. It is the official auction, the official charity of all auctioneers, and we, the auctioneers across the country have raised approximately $4.8 million for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital through the auction of these ties and other, other merchandise. And uh, we're going to auction off a tie this evening, and uh, on behalf of auction sales fans, I'll match up to $200. I know we got some millionaires in here. I don't want you to be able to go home. You saw I drove up in a Kia Sophia. I don't want you to go home and tell the wife, hey, I had a fun time tonight and played bankrupt the auctioneer. <laughs> so uh, I will match up to the first $200. And uh, that will give everybody an opportunity to, to kind of relax a little bit and see how it works. So, Freddie, what do you say we go to work? What do you say we go to uh, St. Jude's Children's Research. Oh, by the way, they don't make the variety that, that uh, Freddie and I have, but they have these beautiful, at Christmas time, you would not want to not have one of these. These beautiful reindeer ties, and I only have about three of these left in my total inventory, so they they were coming rapidly, uh, rapidly in short supply. So, all right, who's talking out with a ten ball? Be able to get ten, able to get ten, with ten. Thank you. Now fifteen. We do fifteen. Fifteen. Now twenty. I'm gonna run fifteen. I'm gonna run fifteen. We get twenty. Thank you. Now twenty-five. I'm gonna run twenty. I'm gonna run twenty. We get twenty-five. We get five. We five. We what now? I'm gonna run twenty. I'm gonna twenty-five. Thanks for that. Thirty. We get thirty. We get thirty-five. Thirty-five. Now forty. Thirty-five, I'm gonna five. Forty, forty, forty. All through all the country, all over the forty. Thank you. Forty by forty. Forty-five, fifty. I'm gonna need fifty to you, sir. Would you do it? Fifty now, fifty-five. But fifty-five now, fifty, sir. Would you do sixty? Would you do sixty? Would you do sixty? Sixty. Thank you, sir. Now sixty-five. Now seventy. Seventy-five. Now eighty. One hundred. Thank you, sir. Now one hundred five. Would you do it? Would you do it? One hundred five. 105, now 10, yeah. yeah. now 15. I'm going to run 10, I'm going to run 10. Will you give me 15? Will you give me 15? Yeah. 15, now yeah. 20, now 25. I'm going to run 20, I'm going to run 20. Will you give 25? Will you give 5? Will you what? Now 25, now 30. 30, now 35. I'm going to run 30, will you 35? 35, now 40, now 45. I'm going to run 40, will you 45? Will you do it? Will you do it? 45, yeah. now 50, 50, 50, now 55. I'm going to run 50, I'm going to run 50. Will you give 55, will you give 55? Will you do it? One more time. Yeah. 55, now 60. Yeah. 60, now 65. I'm going to run 65, now 70. Yeah. 70, now 75. Yeah. 75, yeah. now 80. Now 85, yeah. right? Yeah. 95 you? What, yeah. 200? 205. Would you do it? 205, yeah. now 10. Would you do 210? Would you do 10? Would you do 10? Would you do 10? 10, yeah. 10? Now 50, yeah. 50, now 20, yeah. now 25. I'm yeah. going to yeah. 35, now 40. Yeah. 40, yeah. now 50. I'm going to go to 10. Would you do it, Marvin? Would you go 50? 50, yeah. now 60. 60, yeah. now 70. Yeah. 70, now 80. 80 yeah. now 90, yeah. 90 now 300. I'm going to run 300, yeah. 310. He says, your way, thank you for your bidding. Sir, 300, anybody else want in? $300, $300, I really appreciate this. The largest I've ever done is $325, so I really appreciate this. This is the second largest that Auction Sales Fast has ever done, and we genuinely appreciate it. And I'll tell you what, because you were so aggressive, I know my normal rule is $200. I'll go ahead and match the full $300. So we'll have a grand total of $600. Provided the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital tie. We'll settle up on that after the conclusion of the auction. Thank you very much for your business. Thank you. What's that? Alrighty, folks, we're back, and while we were away, I went ahead and put on a St. Jude's Research Children a St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital tie. Uh, I I didn't have it on at the outset for fear some folks who aren't familiar with the with with these ties would say okay what what what's the deal with him I didn't want to distract from our opening message but I want to say this uh, first of all let me apologize about that video it's it was done in 2010 or 2011 early 2011 back then I didn't have a high definition uh, camera so that's the reason for the lesser quality of the video but you know and at the time you know I had indicated that auctioneers that raised approximately 4.8 million dollars for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. I think the figure now is closer to around 8 million. You know that video was done eight, eight years ago or whatever, seven years ago. I mean, seven years ago because we're in 2018 now. Uh, but I want to say this and Reverend Phillips and I will be doing a, we do it every year, an auction for St. Jude uh, for the Corvette Club, the Baton Rouge Corvette Club, it'll be in April. 
I can never envision a scenario under which I would have taken the plights of these children and exploited it to enable me to make political contributions or endorse a candidate. I cannot tell you how shameful the video, and we're going to have the videos, you're free to watch them. We're going to have one of someone giving St. Jude testimony, the same thing for dreams come true. And you know, if the State Police Commission directly controlled the funding of the State Troopers Association, I could understand this impassioned testimony. But what the State Troopers Association did is they engaged in raw, naked exploitation. Sure, everybody will commend the troopers for their assistance of these charities. That's not the point. You don't turn around then and exploit these people and the plights they've had for your own benefit of making campaign contributions. And I want to just say this. All you've got to do is pull any number of videos from Sound Off Louisiana. I'm going to zoom the camera on in now. I've got it to have this St. Jude tab. I like the camera a little bit closer, so forgive me for making this adjustment. Um, all you've got to do is go through a number of Sound Off Louisiana features, and you will quickly see that Marvin and Henderson and I certainly aren't bosom buddies. But I can never envision, and I don't want to speak for Marvin, but I think I can safely say this. Marvin Henderson would never stoop to what this association stooped to. By the way, it was Marvin Henderson who was bidding that ran the price of the tie up to the $300. He, he cost me some money, and this is one time I was very glad for Marvin to cost me some money. But let me just say this. I don't believe that Marvin Henderson, and like I said, he and I, we're not bosom buddies by any means. But I think I can safely say that Marvin Henderson would never stoop to what transpired at that February 8th meeting, which I just found to be sickening and shameful. And I'm going to be blunt with you. If I would have had the ability to maneuver myself from behind the table and leave that meeting and go out into the hallway, I would have done it. Logistically, I was not going to be able to put it off because the room was too full. I wanted to because I, that was sickening. And I don't know any other way to describe it. And I want to say one thing. After that episode transpired, and, I, and we've given you the videos, you're welcome to go in and look at them. Make up your own mind if you think it was exploitation. I certainly do. And I know I was far from alone on that. Okay. But after that meeting, I didn't feel I could stand in front of a camera and give a presentation to you without my anger riling up. And so what I did is I called on a very good friend of mine, a good buddy, who runs a conservative website that is phenomenal, a conservative blog that is phenomenally successful. His name is Scott McKay. And I asked him if he would mind doing a feature, and he did so. And we're going to give you the link for that hayride feature that he so graciously did. And I thank him for having done that and literally providing me with a 30-day cooling off period because I needed it. Let me be blunt with you. I needed it. And beyond just the testimonials from the St. Jude that you're going to see, and yes, there will be crying and all of this. And that's what I mean about exploiting the plights of these children. It's wrong. It's wrong. And you can see Mr. Toops kind of rub the side of his eyes. There's no, there's no real tear coming here. He's worried about making sure they can make political contributions. It's wrong, folk. It's wrong. And I thank Scott McKay for calling it on the carpet for what it is. Something is very, very wrong with the Louisiana State Troopers Association. We'll also give you the video <clears throat> for Ms. Sharon Thomas. Uh, she is with the Central State Troopers Coalition of Louisiana. She also, I didn't, we couldn't really follow exactly the point she was trying to make, but 
they too want to make these political contributions. All right. Uh, and then we're going to give you the video completely unedited. There's not one second of it taken out of the State Troopers Association's attorney, Floyd Falcon, posing his arguments why he believes that it's totally legal for the State Troopers Association to make these political contributions and make these endorsements. And I would ask of Mr. Falcon, if it is so legal as you say, then why did they go out of their way to funnel it through a straw donor in the name of David Young? If it's so legal, why didn't they just write the check straight out of the Louisiana State Troopers Association account? That alone tells you that they knew this was illegal, okay? But Mr. Falcon is going to argue and did argue, and of course this is all after all of the tearful testimony. Now we get down to the nitty gritty. You notice Mr. Falcon doesn't have all of that emotional appeal. He's just down and dirty. We ought to be able to do this. Okay? And I would submit to you that Mr. Falcons has a few problems of his own. Most notably, he was sued by Humana, a Medicare provider. We're going to give you the link for the lawsuit. He was sued in, in um, around September of last year, 2017. And it seems that Mr. Falcon develops amnesia. When you have these personal injury lawsuits and payments get made to cover the medical bills when the payments had already been made by Medicare, well, guess what? An attorney is legally obligated to ensure that Medicare gets that money back from out of the settlement. And apparently Mr. Falcon developed a little amnesia about his moral and legal obligation to see to it that those payments are reimbursed. And, and why would it have to go all the way to the point of them having to sue Mr. Falcon in federal court? But they did. We're giving you the link to the lawsuit. Now, once they filed the lawsuit, Mr. Falcon apparently saw the light. And this lawsuit was settled within two months. Well, I would submit he was wise to settle it because he didn't have a snowball's chance in hell of being able to defend it. But given that character trait of Mr. Falcon, I don't know that the State Troopers Association should take such strong comfort in his legal arguments. Just, a, just an observation. So, folk, my point in all that is, and I thank you for your indulgence, I thank you if you've made it all the way through this video. If you think that Kathy Durbin didn't step into a minefield when she was willing to process the complaint about these illegal campaign contributions. Just look. Just, and that room was packed. Okay? Now, Mr. O'Quan asked me if I would refrain from videotaping many of the officers, many of the troopers that were there, because he said many of them work undercover. And in a show of good faith, in fact, at one point when I, they wanted to show some audience members of others that had come to, to, to give their statements, I intentionally angled the camera upward so as not to catch these folk because I don't want to compromise anyone's undercover operation. So I, I adhered to Mr. O'Quan's request in that regard. Uh, but that room was packed, is my point. It was packed. Like I said, if I could have managed to gotten out of there, away from the camera and gotten out into the hallway, I would have left because I could not bear to watch this. It was shameful. And I'm just going to wrap this video up. I believe that what the State Troopers Association did on February the 8th is going to buttress and strengthen Kathy Durbin's lawsuit against the State Police Commission. Why? Because it demonstrates the incredible resolve of these people that they want to make these political contributions come hell or high water. Okay? And I'm just going to say something, and, and this is from the heart now. For the troopers out there that take exception to it, I'm sorry. I'm just telling you my thoughts here. Because I'm told that 93 or 94 percent of all troopers are members of this State Troopers Association. I have never been so ashamed of Louisiana State Police in my life as I was 
when I saw that February 8th raw, naked exploitation so that you can make political contributions and endorse political candidates. I want to thank everyone for having tuned into this video. The State Police Commission is going to meet again on March the 8th, this Thursday. We will be there. Presumably they're going to take up this measure again and perhaps make some decision about whether the LSTA would be, whether they're going to back off on making rules prohibiting this. You know, I'll tell you one thing in closing. I would be more than happy to permit these state troopers to make political contributions. And all I would ask in return is that you give up your state civil service protection, okay? Because that's the whole reason you've got state civil service protection in the first place, is to try to protect you against political retaliation. But you want to have your cake and eat it too. But you give us the ability to fire troopers when they engage in outrageous conduct, like, in, like engaging in sexual activities in their police units, on the clock, like escorting underage kids into casinos, like committing blatant payroll fraud, which if you were in private industry, you would be fired like that. You want to make political contributions? I say let's let you make them. But let's give up that state civil service protection to where we can get you out whenever you engage in these activities. To me, that's a fair trade-off. Okay? Are you willing to take it? Because you, you're trying to have your cake and eat it too. And you, you just can't do it. All right? But to, to, to resort, to stoop to something so low as to exploit the plights of these children, many of whom get terminal diagnosis. Sure, we commend your help of these. Are you telling me that if you can't make political contribution, your entity is going to go out of business and you will discontinue assisting these people? Well, then I would submit if that's the case, you were doing it for the wrong reasons. Now, if I have offended some troopers in what I'm said, you just have to live with it because I've told you how I feel. And I know I speak for many others. And I thank those of you who made it all the way through this video for taking the time. And we'll see how they handle this situation on March the 8th. Thank you once again, Robert Burns.